Welcome to the uh, Unity uh, Roofing Machine podcast. Thank you very much for, for being here. We got two special guests from different places uh, in the country. Really excited, Mark, to have uh, Dimitri and Tim Brown here from Hook uh, Agency. Um, Dimitri, I want to talk to you uh, about, uh, introduce you a little bit because you really change a, a lot of things. And tomorrow uh, in our, our cam that we're going to have the two days, uh, you're going to be, actually on Friday, you're going to be talking about relationship. And um, it was just a message on Facebook that I sent you uh, uh, about a year ago now about uh, you th giving us a tour to our, our business. And I never thank you for it, but I'm really, really grateful uh, for it because it triggered a lot of things personally in our business. Uh, but you challenged me to a few things, you know, and, and again, we talk about can get gifts or things or physical thing, but things that you don't see. But you challenged me to um, last year to do public speaking, which was very uh, um, first time for me to be in front of so many people. I didn't expect to be that many people, by the way. I thought it was a breakout <laughs> session. You tricked me. And the second thing is to write a book. So I'm really grateful for you for, for done this. And it triggered really what we're doing now, really to get out of my shelf to not only train Monarch Roofing with the, we had a company, not Monarch Brands, but starting Riva. So I'm really grateful for you. And how do you get this mindset of uh, uh, you were talking about your one relationship away from greatness from different things <coughs> where do i start i'm a i'm a firm believer that it when you go after s your weakness and it's not easy to be in front of camera people tell me all the time dimitri i can't start making videos because i'm not good on in front of the camera no one is Oh, I can't go on a stage because I'm not a good speaker. No one is. I can't write a book. No one is supposed to be writing your books. When you go after a weakness, I do CrossFit every single day. You know, if you want to be competitive with something, you don't attack your strength. You attack your weakness. So if I'm really good at pull-ups, if I can do 30 pull-ups, it's great. But can you squat? Can you mm. run? So if I can do 30 pull-ups and I keep continue doing that, someone will challenge me one day, can you run a mile you know, faster than I am? And I'm like, no, I can't, but can you do pull-ups? What's the point? So if you challenge me, like for example, if I'm a great YouTuber, but if you challenge me on the podcast, I'm like, okay, I guess I have to learn how to speak now, mm -hmm. not just to edit. Like th this is challenging for me. This is live video with the audience. I'm like, can't speak English. I can't do this, but I have to learn. Well, you, so, you, we talk about this before. What saves you is great looks. So <laughs> you, got, you got one up on everybody now. But the the thing is, you have to go after your weakness. And so many business owners in business in general, mm. we go like, okay, I'm good at sales, but I'm bad at production. What does that mean? You can't be in business if you're bad at production. Oh, Dimitri, I don't understand marketing. I'm really good at sales, but I don't know how to get leads. That's your business. If you cannot get leads, if that's your weakness, get out of the game. You can't be in the game if you have a weakness. You're only as strong as your weakness. And unless you realize it and face the truth, you will always be that weak. That's love the it. thing. That's yeah, awesome. That's awesome. And I love this because uh, um, we talk about, uh, like, uh, as a leader, uh, you remind me of a quote from um, um, John Maxwell. He's talking about this. He said, in order to, to become great, like you said, you have to do it yourself first. You know, a lot of times we want to go easy button, easy button. Um, and I remember when we started hiring people, I used to get mad at HR. I don't know if you remember with Emma, I was upset at her. I'm like, what's the matter with you? Why can you not find inside sales? Um, but it was uh, it was my fault because I didn't understand the How process. did you fix it? I did it myself. And, and, and that's like, or your personality, I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go in. I'm going to do it myself. I'll figure it out. And it was really hard. It was really, and it's still hard to do hiring. But I had to end up uh, meeting 100 people, that w do a 10 minutes interview, and I think uh, she's here, Lizzie. Um, ended up hiring her. She's amazing. It's been three years now. Uh, but I did 100, it was over 100 interviews, 10 minutes interview on Zoom um, from, from Indeed, and to find out that person and then that matched the right disc that we were looking for and the servant mentality that we we're looking for. So mm -hmm. it's then after that, okay, we got to get a better process and, and procedure to do it. And then I can hire somebody to train them to do it. Because I'm like, uh, I love it. That's a very unique person. It doesn't mean you like to do it, but you have to learn it first. You know what? Uh, the biggest feedback on that. I w used to run my business and when I was doing two to three million dollars a year I remember August of 2015 I would sell every job um, pull every permit 
deliver trailer to every job and in August we would do like two hundred forty thousand dollars a month September we did even more than 250 or 260 and I was all men like one man show doing it all and then I hired production manager sales manager and I remember conversation next year when I hired them we were doing three four million I'm paying people eighty thousand dollar a year seventy thousand a year and I remember talks they're like Dimitri, how did you do it yourself there's three of us doing what you did mm. last year because they see the books. They're like, okay, last August you did 250,000. You have no complaints. They knew that, you know, 5.30 in the morning, I dropped a trailer on every job. I pulled every permit. I sold every job. I collected every check. And, you know, today we have three, four people doing the same thing. Like, how did you do it? Because when you lead by example, you know, I was putting 40 and 15 hours per day now they're doing eight ten mm -hmm. but they're like how did you do it and that's how you earn a third in your own company you're not uh, leading from the top like you do this they know you can do it without them but you need them to scale and I think it's very important servant mentality for sure. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next two days is servant mentality. I feel like, you know, I'm coming from a sales side. I think the sales side and the leadership side from Martin and, you know, what I've experienced in Monarch Roofing for the five, six years is all servant mentality. You know, mm -hmm. so I think you hit that on the head. So you talk about leads. I know, Martin, you wanted to talk about a little Tim a little bit about what leads. And <laughs> I, I'm going to harp on uh, Dimitri a little bit on door, uh, door to door after that. So No, no, I, absolutely. And then definitely a lot of questions that, that trigger. I love this conversation. Um, and uh, uh, Tim, uh, we were talking about like uh, as a business owner, we get and it happened in 2013 when we opened up we had a, a, a office right it was not in my house anymore we had an office with a, a, a sign on the street and everybody started coming to our office to sell us everything and everything <laughs> mm. it was crazy we we had to build a wall in the, in the entry to protect from people coming in my office <sighs> so but you're doing that kind of industry so how can you help like we don't want there's a lot of people out there to do that like similar uh, SEOs and you can tell a bit about what you do and how you we can identify a good company versus average company sure um, I think in my business um, if you're getting somebody inquiring to you kind of like cold messaging or um, emails or whatever it's usually the lower end companies so for the most part like our business we have people come to us because we've kind of demonstrated with our case studies and stuff like that um, usually when they're popping in your DMS <laughs> they're usually a little bit lower end company it's not always the case yeah. and I don't want to rip on people that are newer but ultimately they should be focused on creating a case study like I, I did a YouTube video recently where I was just like trying to give advice to those newer agencies that are trying to break into a niche and I think First and foremost, they should try to be useful to people, um, and and then earn that. You can create create content, right? And then people will um, come to them. And I believe that you should probably hunt somebody down yourself and not take the first thing that pops into your DMs. I think that that's where people get hung up, and so they spend two hundred bucks or a thousand bucks a month or something like that on on SEO, search engine optimization, or paid Google ads or Facebook ads or something like that. And then they're like, it doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work. And I mean, there's, you know, it does suck to get scammed. It does, it does feel very bad. And yes, you could discount all the people that do that because you had a bad, one bad experience or a couple bad experiences. Let, let's be real. There's, it's also hard to do this stuff. Like, it's not like, it's not like everyone's trying to scam you. It's some people are just not that good at it. Mm -hmm. Um, so not everything's a scam. Yeah, and, and we hear this, like, uh, yeah. the, the DM, like, are you looking for more leads, you know? Yeah. And, and when we have, um, like, issues in our, like, process, like, we when we look at uh, the numbers and, and we start working together a little bit, but before that, uh, with the numbers were, like, less than 10% on mm. AdWords or mm -hmm. um, website. Website? Like, uh, conversion rate of yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the closing rate was, yeah, was I, really low. Yeah. How, like, do you, like, mm. say, okay, well, if you, a company that you're using, you sh your closing rate should be this. I think, like, 20 to 30%. More like, I mean, that, if yeah. you got 10%, percent closing rate on Google ad leads or search engine optimization leads you gotta look closely at that and that's real leads like obviously they've got to be real leads um, and there's a little bit of filtering there because there's there is spam and when yeah. you start marketing heavily like you're talking about you got a sign on the door and now people are coming into your office 
when you start to get more people to your website, yes, there there tends to be a little bit more spam. So you can put a captcha on the, the contact form, you can do different things, but ultimately the goal should not be, I want to decrease spam as much as possible. The, the, it should be, I want to increase leads as much as possible, and then we'll, we'll sort through that other stuff. Um, yeah, I think the biggest problem, so search engine optimization is the, the natural, getting natural people on your website through the main listing in Google, and Google Ads is like those top three things, and um, local service ads is really cool, and it's got the reviews up there, and it, I mean, but the, wor the worse than having an experience where there's a negative experience around search engine marketing or these different things, worse is if you get a false negative I really believe that um, the if you pay a very little amount and then you have a negative experience and then you discount that for the rest of your life, you're like, I'm not going to do search yeah. engine marketing. And, and, and what yeah. is a you know? And I, I want to get to yeah. your question here, but what is a, like a, an amount that you would say like, okay, you're a three million dollar company, you should be paying about if you invest one thousand dollar a month, you should get three leads quality is there a rule of thumb for it's way like that? yeah it's way easier on google ads where it's like our average lead cost for through google ads is like 117 you know and there's other ones where it's like you know people 200 300 it's but that's the easy one yeah. google ads <laughs> is awesome i mean it's really predictable and that's why people like it and that's why they spend a ton of money but it, a wise man once told me jim aileen from roofer marketers shout out uh that the you wouldn't knock a, uh, if you're knocking doors transition possibly, <laughs> uh, you wouldn't good. you wouldn't knock two out of ten doors yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's what Google Ads is it's two out of ten doors the other eight is search engine optimization but because it takes a long time and because it's less predictable people are not spending aggressively there but what if you really you know understand this goes back to your point about doing some of this stuff yourself first i think a lot of business owners could be doing some search engine optimization themselves some of them are some of you guys out there are and i mean blogging answering questions they ask you answer marcus sheridan and then also creating location landing pages are things that you can do right now to get more leads just make sure there's 500 plus original words on each one of those location landing pages i'm trying to pepper the no, i know i know you the go value through this is yeah, awesome yeah. And, and i know we're going to have a, a solid uh you know a, tomorrow we're going to have an hour i think with 30 minutes uh, talking about this we will find out more and i got more questions uh, for you but i'm going to open up mark i know you've been uh, thinking about yeah well you talked bit. about dimitri coming to um monarch yeah. roofing and I, and again that's something that i kept watching you man i saw, saw on youtube and i brought I think it brought Dimitri to your attention. We started watching YouTube. Yes. And I mean, we got to get this guy to it. But one thing that hit when you, you came to our office, and I don't know if you remember, we did the morning meeting. You know, we had a little bit of a morning meeting. And uh, one of the first things you said was, you know, I, I think a, one of our sales guys asked you about door knocking. He said, man, I don't know anything about door knocking. And, you know, it resonated with me a little bit. And I've done door knocking in the past, but I didn't feel like it was a long lasting business model, or I didn't feel like, I'd see the same guys, you know, from 2016 to to now, still door knocking. I'm just wondering why. Why didn't they ever just start branding, or why don't they try to work on their branding or start getting in-house leads? I was very fortunate enough with Monarch Roofing to start out. I did some door knocking, but at least got one or two leads um, a day, you know, from this guy's uh, genius marketing. Um, but you really resonated with me because I felt like you had that same model. Whereas, guys, we need to start building a brand rather than door knocking. And I'm not knocking any door knockers out there for sure um, because I think it's a great business to get started with but I'm wondering why not many more companies around the country start branding or marketing a little bit better rather than concentrating on just door knocking is it a susceptible business plan long term I think if you <clears throat> if you look at the numbers numbers don't lie it comes down to mentality and it comes down to short term game and long term game People who tend to invest in branding, they are here for long term. Yep. They're not here for one or two years, they're here for 10 years. If you're willing to spend you know, three, $4,000 on a vehicle wrap, and you're gonna, how many vehicle wraps do you have? 50, 60, 70? Yeah, but yeah well with it, three locations, a little bit more than that, but yes. It takes mindset. So think about it, you spend 150, 200 grand wrapping your vehicles. 
Well, Storm Chaser can do 20 million a year with the door knockers and he will never spend a dollar on a vehicle wrap. Why is that? Short term thinking. So it's a mindset mentality. It's, uh, I, I always say you can hustle people for money or you can sell them value. Like when you brand, I hate marketing. I, I, no, <laughs> He's happy that you He's like the best <laughs> roofer marketer out there. Yeah. <laughs> right now. No offense to team here, but I hate uh, pay-per-click Google. Like I'm an organic guy. I want you to call me to do business with me, like period. I want to build a brand. I want to be wanted. Like I want to build something. I want to create a value when people stand in line and say, Dimitri, what do you have? Whether it comes to my conference, and I do it in everything. I do it at my conference. I do it in school. I, you will never hear, uh, you will never receive phone call from Roofing Insights, Directory, Storm Group Roofing, calling you, trying to pitch your product. I want to be found. I want you to go to Google and find out like yeah. best shingle, best roofing conference, best whatever. And I want to be like, okay, here's the result. And I want you to call me and I'll sell you that. You want to be an influencer rather than a convincer or persuader. It's not even influencer. <laughs> I, nobody, no one becomes influencer. You just have to provide the answer at the right time. Yeah. You, you know, supply and demand. Supply, uh, demand creates supply. Everything I've ever done was created by demand. People were demanding videos, I created them. Yep. People were demanding better conference, I created it. People demanding better platform for to connect homeowners and contractors, we created it. When you create a product based on demand, you will always have a line at the door. But if you have a product that no one wants, then you have to go a door knock. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you live in Texas, who is waking up in the morning? Oh, all right, I hope guy number 21 will knock at my door. <laughs> well, and I, we see this, like the, the model seems like it, it's changing a lot. Even when you see just Amazon and then CarMax, where they're doing a little bit the like concept of the roofing machine, it's, I feel like we're not far away from, you know, some bigger company to come in to maximize what you both are talking about, the branding, the SEO's online presence. That's not going to be necessary so much because people, who wants to get somebody to knock on the door? We talk about hormones. You know, somebody knocks on your door, adrenaline rush right through your blood. Cortisol, yeah. Yeah, and then you open but, the door, what happens? But, like, but here, here, oh. here's the challenge. Here's the challenge, though. Amazon, and no one talks about it, but Amazon used to, and still to this day, is a big purchase of Google Ads. As a matter of fact, if you go to Google and you type in products, if you type in, you know, shoes on Amazon, you're going to see Amazon ad. Amazon used to be the biggest buyer of Google ads. Why is that? You have to recognize big players. Like today, I recognize the player. I'm not gonna run away from it. Like I, you have to recognize. You have to recognize BBB. You have to recognize Google. You have to recognize establishment. Establishment. But you also have to put them out of business. And you will if you do it right. <laughs> So with the products, and, and of course, there's a lot of companies here that uh, are roofing products that they have a good product, but you know, I think it takes more than just a good product when you come to roofing companies because there's obviously more competition around, but I think, and what we're gonna talk a lot about in the next two days is differentiating yourself, right? And I think you talk a lot about it. I see you, uh, you brand a lot of other companies around the country. What's some of your strategies that you can give to the people that are listening or, um, and I'm gonna give a lot of them in the next, uh, tomorrow at, at, my, at my speaking. I'm, but I'm gonna tell you right now, don't sell bullshit. Bullshit ends right here. People have common sense. And if you sell 50 year old shingle warranty today, sooner or later, you're going to get called out. There's only so much you can go with the bullshit. There's only so far, you know, you can sell me unlimited wind warranty, 130 mile wind warranty, unlimited, like whatever. People are going to wake up and they're going to believe what they believe and they know they're going to buy what's real. So my channel everything i've done is you know expose the gimmick sell the real stuff that's believable and honest and people are gonna follow you people you know it's it's make it make it process super simple stop the gimmick gimmicks don't sell and how are you gonna explain that to a homeowner 
when a homeowner sees a, a website and it says a 50 year a limited lifetime and you have another roofing company come in here talk about a, a lifetime roofing company a lifetime shingle yet you come in with the same thing and you're not talking about how would you differentiate yourself to that homeowner then and you're coming from it as like an influencer side but i want to kind of take it to like a roofing company side and the salesman okay. side how we how we, are you gonna tell a homeowner I'll, that I'll it's, tell you. the n numbers don't lie right <clears throat> When you buy a car, let's say you want to buy a Ford versus Chevy, you're shopping around. If you're considering Ford F-150 versus Dodge 1500, are you going to go to Dodge and Ford websites for information? Or are you going to go to YouTube to see some influencer testing, you know, trucks? And if you, if you type in Ford versus Chevy and you see the YouTuber, here's what's happening right now. People are going to call you and say, hey, I want to purchase Atlas shingles or GF shingles or OC shingles. I've done my research. What's your research? I watched this YouTube video. Mm -hmm. That's the research. If you want to buy Tesla and you're considering, you're not going to go to tesla.com to find out information about Tesla. You're going to Google Tesla complaints and you're going to see if it's legit. And that's how you're going to make a decision. People don't go to the source for the information. They do go to the third parties. And that's how it is. You, 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 you're not gonna go to the sales rep, you're not gonna go to the manufacturer. And that's the reason why owingscoring.com, jf.com, ico.com struggling to generate leads. They're all doing what home advisor is doing. The problem is no one goes in and say, hey, Ico, send me your roofer, because they know there's a bias. Yeah. You go to the third party. That's why Better Business Bureau is so successful because you want an independent source yeah. to tell you who is real. That's why Google is so successful. What's the job of the Google? To give you the best search result. You know, I'm here in Myrtle Beach. I want to eat in a steakhouse. What's the best steakhouse around? I don't know, but I trust Google. We all are. Yeah. And that's what we have to build. I'm not going to go to steakhouse.com to find a steakhouse near me. I'm going to go to Google. We have to build a Google for this industry. Love it. Yeah, and I think that's what you're doing a little bit with uh, directory, yes. uh, so, some of it, which, which is really exciting. And, and it reminds me a little bit of, uh, you know, how we get our, our business model. It's based a lot of like on referrals, right? That's what you're trying to, to talk about, mm -hmm. I think. Like we're going on YouTube so I can see an influencer talk about it, somebody's experienced it, what they thought about it. So you're looking for somebody that knows a lot Absolutely. about it. You, you want to you, you want an unbiased opinion, third party. Very good. So, uh, what about the uh, uh, directory? H how are you doing with this? Uh, how's the the business going? Um, it's we about to blow up. Actually, today is a huge deal. So, when we launched it, I, I promise from the day one we will never sell lead to anyone. Like I don't want to sell leads. I want to connect homeowners. Like think about directory as Uber or Amazon of construction industry. Homeowner comes in, finds the contractor, hires contractor, pays the contractor, and we have a very small fee. We announced it two years ago. We're going to charge 3%. Today is the day. We first transaction, we charge 3% contractor. So here's what we did. For years, for two years, we've been connecting contractors. I have contractors calling me. It's like, okay, I got the job. I completed it. How do I pay you? I'm like, don't worry about it. Enjoy it. We did not charge anyone couple weeks ago we're like okay we need to start monetizing right. it so we did we sent email to all our homeowners hundreds and hundreds of emails thousands of emails they start getting back to us i got the job from this guy and we start sending invoices so today first invoice was paid three percent so this guy did eleven thousand dollar job homeowner was happy he is happy boom transaction happened so we're charging three percent after the job is complete and you get paid so let's say Monarch Roofing is in directory, homeowner goes in, types in zip code, your three other contractors near, you, you submit the bids, we guarantee your work. So if you take their money run away, we guarantee with a $20,000 guarantee. If you get the job and they complete the job, you complete the job, $20,000, we charge you 3% on transaction fee, homeowner gets the guarantee from us, you pay us 3%, which is less than your marketing budget, that, that, that's how we do it, but we monitor. And in case of dispute, we are there involved in the whole process. So or the, um, the homeowner would be looking into the, the attraction there, like the warranties to get the 
back up with a twenty thousand dollar warranty from it. That's why do we want to pay that or it, uh, how well, do you Well, the homeowner is not paying anything. The contractor paying. It's a contractor, contract. just like pays. Uber. So when you order Uber or when you order something from Amazon, you are not paying the seller who's paying. So you're paying to be part of net. So for you, directory is a part of your marketing budget. But for the homeowner, is the platform that guarantees. As a matter of fact, you know, homeowner can pay us and we can pay you. If homeowner calls and say, "Hey, I don't trust this guy, twenty thousand yeah. dollars. Can I pay you? You pay <laughs> no them? Way. Absolutely." Cool. Yeah. So we are like trust fund. We're a mediator. We are there, start to finish. Yeah, and, and, and just I'm, I'm triggering things sure. here, but what blocks, you know, the, the, the homeowner to uh, um, the contractor the contract is like, I'm going to save you 2%. Just don't sure. tell Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can. Well, here's the thing. J just like uh, Uber, can Uber take your cash and do it? Absolutely, you can. And I'm OK with it. And it will happen. But if you would be the owner of director, would you keep that contractor if you find out? Like um, right. I am in, in the warranty too, right? Like it's got to be something for me. Hey, where's my paperwork? Yeah. Exa exactly. Everything I do, I do in a sense like if I would be a contractor still today, would I sign up for this? Absolutely. So if I'm a contractor and someone is giving me jobs and all I have to do is 3%, yeah. why would I ever screw it up? But if I got crooked in my head and I'm like, okay, I'm going to cheat here. Mm -hmm. Like you are essentially jeopardizing a relationship with us. I'm going to cut you off. If I'm gonna find out oh. that you do it, I'm gonna kick you out. And what you're and gonna maybe do a few next? YouTube videos on it too. Right? Oh yeah, that that guy's getting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I actually, you know, I actually great. never. <laughs> I, I rarely, rarely do the videos on the personal experience. It's usually someone else. I usually don't do it. No, it's awesome, and I, I love the concept for sure. Um, on marketing side, uh, uh, Tim, uh, anything that you're working on the right now that's uh, th that's coming up that or, or, or mistakes that you see? I know you talked to me about this uh, before, mm. like a uh, biggest mistake you see uh, a roofing contractor maybe spend yeah. the money in the wrong place where you're like, yeah, maybe it's not the right place to do it. Yeah, I think to me the biggest principle is just to fully understand what you're delegating. You were talking about hiring. You're probably not doing all the hiring currently, are you? N n well, I still am. You are, you do a lot, okay. <laughs> no, say, no, man, my yeah, gosh, yeah. iron's so important. It's all second, right. third interview, I do I, a lot. A okay, lot. I, I, I do too, and, and Somebody yeah. asked me that before, I says, hey, Mark, what's your role now? I'm not yeah. involved in any of the locations anymore. Yeah. Uh, we have GMs that are phenomenal, uh, but I'm still, I feel like one of my biggest roles through my whole 15 years uh, that's been, it's been recruiting, you know, like mm -hmm. how did I meet Mark, yeah. how I meet Rob, how I meet so many key uh, employees and people that I get to work with, yeah. it's people I met somewhere, Mark was working as a general manager, mm -hmm. I kept going to his restaurant every yeah. day so I couldn't get him to do an interview with me, it yeah. took me forever, uh, but it's people we, we start to meet, I think that's. I love that. So um, recruiting is, is always. Yeah, I, I just always think you, you should know how to do the thing before you delegate it. And you don't need to be like a master, no. but you need to actually try stuff. So I, was, I just did a video about just you shouldn't delegate or you shouldn't uh, outsource social media marketing, in my opinion. I think social media, and there's a lot of people they'll sell it to you. They'd love to. I mean, it's, it's easy, guys. <laughs> it's really easy. You just post the thing. You take the picture and post the thing. Stop outsourcing that it's easier to suck at social marketing yeah well try so you gotta suck before you get good true um so basically i just like in half the time because shout out to anna who's our social media yeah, yeah. by anna. the way who's an absolute beast like Alicia, <laughs> anna, Alicia. we used to do it for Big companies girl. so like i i you know i've been that guy yeah. and like people would just like put their photos into a google drive and then be like all right now post those we'd add an emoji and then it's good yeah you know like i mean yeah. it's more complicated than that but it's not that's not really value adding you know what i mean so like i just think people should get better at doing it themselves try stuff get better at blog a bit like to me that i'm a from i feel the bootstrap mentality you know like when started. when you're going from up to one million and up to two million like you got to get in there you got to get your hands dirty you got to try stuff and if you can't do that I mean, it's really hard uh, to delegate and respect what you're delegating too, because the process is hard and you want to respect the process, not just the results. You know what I mean? So understanding a little bit more about it, you can respect the process and then you, you're much more likely to appreciate the result as it happens. Yeah, and I think it helps you to establish too, like uh, what you're going to be looking for. Like if you are in somebody in social media, you have no idea how you're going to hold them 
you know, a, a scoreboard for them. So mm-hmm. you can say good job or not a good job, you know? So it's, if you do it, like when I did it and I'm like, okay, I need to interview a hundred people. It doesn't take one day to find somebody where mm-hmm. my expectations were a lot different by doing it. I'm like, yes. okay, it might take two weeks before. Um, so exactly yeah. like, you know, nothing makes you pre- like, it's really easy to critique like a movie, a Hollywood movie, right? Like everyone always like, ah, I can't believe that one in an uh, Emmy or what is it? Oscar, yeah, Oscar. or whatever. Um, and then you try to try to make a movie. Yeah. yeah. You'll respect them a lot yeah. more. It's really hard. Like, uh, you know, try stuff. Try, try st- I've tried stand up comedy. I've tried to make a movie. I've tried all these things because it helps me respect all these people. And you really, really appreciate stuff more when you try it. So at least get out there and try it. And then you can delegate it way better. And yeah, Martin talks about it all the time having employees that do a lot of things, right? We talk to a lot of companies that have multiple job roles. And, yep. you know, our big thing is like having to focus on one thing, right? And obviously, fortunate enough mm. to, he, he grew a business, fortunate enough to be able to find employees that do one thing. But um, we see it all the time where people have multitasking. And the first thing that we kind of say is like, wow, that's actually a good thing. Now we can kind of, you know, everybody's job. And now we can kind of narrow it down. Mm-hmm. to maybe focus on your one thing but it's been awesome i know we're coming to the time and yes. before martin closes i first well, want to say thank yes. you guys for, for well, coming. well we actually have a little thank you oh. like if, since Sorry uh, uh interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> dimitri since you, you've been a, a good promoter for us and, and uh, you've been telling you your student and getting the students uh, the book so we got you uh, 20 copies here for the, oh, the wow. roofing machine for for you you can you can keep them all or you can give to your student <laughs> or whatever right? awesome. I know you're a big fan but Oh, I've been waiting for this because you cannot get this book. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll bring it back and I'll ship it to my students. Very good. Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate Absolutely. you, Mark. Uh, it was the end of uh, The Roofing Machine. Hope you enjoy. If you can uh, uh, subscribe on, on uh, YouTube, it's going to be on YouTube here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, always a pleasure to see you, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.